Hey, all right, so real quick, we're on back. All right, so, um, yeah, a quick uh, definition on the, uh, the pad definition. Now, sketching for floors, ceilings, and roofs. They skim through this section, but then they go back to it. Because floors, ceilings, and roofs are sketch-based objects, the method you use when creating the boundary lines is critical to the behavior of the element to those around it. The recommended method is to use the pick walls option, and this is a certification objective. By selecting the walls to generate the sketch for the roof, you are creating a parametric relationship between the walls and the roof. If the design of your building changes and the wall position is modified, the roof will follow that change and adjust to the new wall position without any intervention from you. Well, let's get this example up on the screen. Let's just give a, a quick uh, architectural wall. We'll do a, a generic 12 inch, uh, 8 inch block wall. Right around here, right over here, and make a quick uh, rectangle. Throw in a floor by picking walls. Make sure the Pick walls command is active, boundary line. And again, we can get to sloping it and spanning and all that when we get to that. Right now, we're just going to do this as per the book. By the book, we're going to throw the book at them. I right, so you have, we have our floor. And now, let's just go to our roof real quick. And um, again, if we look at this in elevation, you got to remember this is, uh, this is residing on the uh, level one top of foundation wall. So these walls go up to level two, right? The roof is at level uh, is at level three, or 20 feet from zero. All right, so um, we have to remember that. So um, let's just keep this open. Let's open up a, a south elevation, and let's tile those views. And let's do a ZA, center them all in our viewports. And let's just get this over here so we get a better idea when we create it, watching it uh, dynamically, if you will. All right, so let's do that. Let's go to uh, architecture. And as you can see, there's a roof toolbar. And there's a few tools. Um, roof by footprint. Creates a roof using the boundary footprint to find its boundaries. To create a roof by footprint, open a floor plan view or a reflected ceiling plan view. You can specify different slopes and overhangs for the roof when you create it or use the default values and refine them later. Roof by extrusion creates a roof by extruding a profile that you sketch. To create a roof by extrusion, open an elevation view, a 3D view, or a section view. When sketching the roof profile, you can use a combination of straight lines and arcs as well as reference planes. The height of the roof depends on the location where you sketch the profile. Roof by face creates a roof using a non-vertical face of the mass. If you change the mass face, roofs created using this tool do not automatically update. So update the roof, select it, and click update to face. Roof soffit creates a roof soffit in the building model. To create a roof soffit, open a plan view. To create a soffit that is associated with walls and roofs, use the pick roof edges and pick walls tools to create a non-associative soffit. Using, use the line tools. To create a sloping soffit, use the slope arrow tool. Roof fascia adds fascia to the edges of roof soffit or other fascia or to model lines. Highlight edges or model lines and click to place, to place the fascia. As you click, Contig contiguous edges, one continuous fascia is created if the fascia segments meet at corners of a miter. All right, so we're going to get into these. Roof gutter. Add to gutter to the edge of roof, soffit, or fascia, or to model lines. Highlight horizontal edges or model lines and click to place the gutter. As you click contig contiguous edges, one contiguous gutter is created. And contiguous, if we want to use word association, think of the contiguous United States. Okay? It's contiguous. Um, all right, so roof by footprint. Pick walls to create lines. One, two, three, four. Base level, level one. Room bounding, yes, and that's important for spaces. Related to mass, not selectable. Base off offset from level, no. Right now, it's going to be on level one, which is going to have to be adjusted. Um, extend to wall core, overhang. Define slope. Well, let's give this a six inch overhang. And we'll get a rafter or truss. Okay. Rafter cut, plumb cut, two cut plumb, two cut square. Well, we're not uh, carpenters just yet. So let's just keep this a plumb cut, keep it a phase created project completion. Let's just hit apply. 
and hit OK. So we have this basic roof. It's, as you can see, down on the first floor level. So if I was to, we have it selected. And if we were to create a, a section view, now look, base level, level one. We can bring this up to level two. You hit apply. Well, there's the roof. It's just a flat basic roof. If I was to bring this up to the roof level, you hit apply. But no, notice that the uh, the walls aren't aren't up to, uh, attached top base. Attached just like the walls to model elements such as roofs and floors. Now, if we were to and select all of these attached top base, uh, we we should be able to have this go up to the oops. Highlighted walls are attached to, but miss the highlighted targets. Okay, well, we could, hold on, we have to attach these. We have to attach these. Houston, we're having technical difficulties. Top constraint. Roof. Apply. All right, so, as you can see, let's get all of these. Top constraint. Roof. Apply. All right, so now we have this simple roof. Now, it didn't overhang as much as I, I, I could have sworn. I said to give it a six inch overhang. And if we look at this, um, at the roof height, hold on, hold that thought. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. If we look at this again, It almost looks like it's overhanging from the interior face of the 12 inch wall, six inches this way, right? The overhang. So if I was to edit the footprint, I don't have the option to, uh, to adjust the overhang, as you can see here. All right, so that's okay. All right, so it doesn't go into that in this paragraph. Uh, we're about a few pages away from, we're a couple pages away from that. So, again, I'm not going to uh, uh, go into all the solutions right now. Uh, this is in steps. This is just a, a quick interjection of what they want us, what they want to illustrate, and that the preferred method is the pick walls method. So, um, and it wants us to know that if we indeed, it's parametric. It's parametric. So if you change one thing, if the roof is attached to it, it's going to be impacted by, uh, the roof will be uh, impacted by that, but it's, it's attached to it. So another good example of that is when you draw something like this, and make a, a very a small change to the roof. Let's get it like this. Let's do it something like that. Let's see if we can nudge this over a little bit. Make it just more equidistant. Let's get rid of this roof. Let's select all, oops, let's select all these walls. And let's bring them up to uh, the roof level. Apply. Let's uh, go to the roof level. stay here. All right, so let's do the roof again. Roof by footprint. Overhang. Let's try 24 inches. Let's see what this does. It may have to go negative. And maybe uh, it's one of those deals. And you can see how it's going in the, it is in the, uh, the overhang is in the negative direction. So if I was to go negative, 36 inches. Let's see if it does all of them. No, it didn't. It's, it didn't do all of them. I have to set that before. So let me undo that. Let's just double check the, our sanity here. Let's just double check that. And let's pick walls with an overhang of negative 36. Let's just get this straight. Ah, see? 
it depends on where you pick. So. I picked the top one. It's very sensitive to how you set the span. You can change it that on the fly, but it's, it's very sensitive to which way you pick the wall. As you can see, this guy, there it is. It adjusts itself. Okay, so um, the negative offset is away from um, the corner of the, uh, the core of the, the wall. We'll, we'll check the math, but let's just uh, make sure the base level is the roof. Base levels of roof, uh, cutoff level, plunk cut, project completion, latest and mass. Double check everything. Let's just say okay for now. Edit footprint. Alright, so basically what I wanted to show you was that if I if I take this wall and I move it over, the roof I will adjust with the wall. And that's you know, the bi-directional associativity keeps things connected so that uh, you're not having to go back every time you change a line and plan, uh, having a change in elevation, change in 3D change it here, change it there, then that's what makes uh, the job almost insurmountable in the amount of time that is mandated for the job if you're required to operate at a certain level, certain speed, and you're still doing it in an anti antiquated manner, you're going to find that it may not work out well for you. All right, so I'm just, uh, just to touch on the roof yet, because they go right back to, uh, to slab edges, so they have us going here and there. So, um, okay, so let me just read this passage. By selecting the walls to generate the sketch for the roof, you are creating a, a parametric relationship between the walls and the roof. If the design of your building changes and the wall position is modified, the roof will follow that change and adjust to the new wall position without any intervention from you. Also notice in uh, the figure that the illustrated roof was generated with overhangs beyond the exterior faces of the walls. You can specify an overhang or offset value for a floor, ceiling, or roof in the options bar before clicking walls to define the sketch. If your building design is using curtain walls, be careful with the location lines of these walls. The location line of a curtain wall is defined relative to the offsets specified in the mulligan and panel families that make up the curtain wall type, as discussed in Chapter 13, Creating Walls and Curtain Walls. You have many options when defining the relative location line of your curtain wall types. For further this exercise in the section, Creating a Structural Floor earlier in this chapter, for example, of picking curtain walls with an offset based on a centered location line, and we talked about that. I put it right through the glass. If you remember, offset three inches went three, straight through the mulligan with the floor, with the structural floor. Um, it was at the negative direction that we had to go into the glass. So positive Z in that case came at us. Uh, negative Z was into the glass or into your monitor, depending on how you view the right hand rule. Remember, it's the right hand rule, a UV grid and the XY uh, Z Cartesian coordinate in the Euclidean space that we're uh, operating in. So uh, we need to modeling slab edges next. Let's see how much I can get through today. Uh, but we still got a lot to get to. And once we get through the entire text, I expect for you to review it. You're going to have to review. Now, don't necessarily um, utilize that precious time to critique uh, this education assessment. I wouldn't, I wouldn't utilize this precious time to, uh, to, uh, to critique the educational assessment. I would utilize this time to study it, to study this text. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Worry about yourself. Um, because we still have to get to the MEP portion of this. And I only stress this because there are so many opportunities out there uh, with someone who just has a little bit of this sprinkled in to their repertoire of tools 
because you're going to find it in the workplace. The industry demands it. I'm not making it up. Uh, the legislation demands it. Go watch the news. You'll see. Don't kill a messenger.